Well, next thing I know, an episode is going to be called They Steal in My Stuff. You sound like Donna Brazil. Uh, Donna, how did Hillary get the question? Man, they stole it from my emails. A thief in the night. No, I know they were stolen, but... <laughs> can I can I propose that is the episode title of our episode? Pat sounds like Donna Brazil. Okay, that's better. Welcome aboard another brand spanking new episode of another Below Deck Podcast. I'm your captain. <laughs> Dylan settled up next to the producer of the podcast, Patrick Hickey. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Great to be here. Nick, what's wrong with you? You're looking all, you, you're looking all funky right now. I don't now. like to be caught off guard with my tagline. You know what I mean? Who caught you off guard? You? You rarely say, how you doing? Okay, Nick. I mean, not even when we hang out as friends. Nick, uh, shame on you. Shame on you. Mm. Nick, calling from across the 405. Old lady spit in his mouth. How you doing? Ahoy, mateys. Um, all right, so tonight we've got just a gangbuster of an episode. I don't want to step on anybody's toes with fan favorite segment thoughts and knots before we even fucking get there. I want to get some PSAs out of the way. I don't have any. All right. Well, now that those are out of the way, let's get into a fan favorite segment. Thoughts and also nots, Pat. All right. I'm going to go. Why doesn't Nick go first? Hmm. Uh, even though when I really look back on it, there weren't, I, I, there weren't like really storylines. For some reason, I was riveted during this episode. I yeah. feel like there's impending doom happening, um, especially with these ominous shots of Hannah popping pills and acting erratically. Sure. We'll get uh, there. So, so well, not a ton of uh, stuff happened. I, I found myself riveted 79 knots. Or, yeah. Yeah, 79 knots. 79? Mm-hmm. I feel the exact same way. I, I didn't have a lot of tea. There, were, there weren't a ton of explosive moments, but there was, there was enough hmm. throughout to keep me coming back. I'm looking for some type of analogy, but rather than stumble to try and get there, I'll just say I had a blast. 78 knots, Pat. 78 knots. Yeah. Hmm. All right, I'll sum it up. Really, I, that, I was thinking of like a like. Ugh, I was thinking of like a rat. Sorry, rat. Morphine drips. Perfect, Pat. Why don't you say that's not okay? I'll be brief. Uh, Kiko is a little slice of heaven. Oh, I just mm-hmm. love him. The lemon meringue uh, pie. <laughs> Justin and Scout. Uh, if I was a lonely person uh, and I wanted someone to pay for everything, I. Hang out with both of them. Okay, well, that's disgusting. And I love that the boat never left the dock, and the crew had the nerve to sit there with their fucking hands out. It was wonderful. <laughs> 81 <laughs> knots. Okay, that's the highest knots you've given this season, I think, aside from your random 100 knots, which don't pertain to any real entertainment value whatsoever. But hmm. let's get into the show. Last we left off, uh, the Majorcan beach bureaucrats that scolded Justin Thornton Sandy and ass face dog face Leon for having a tarp on the beach. The guests want to go back because this is a bust as, as far as beach days go. Um, but they're also going to be bringing their friends. Remember now Malia is not answering her radio. Uh, they are stranded on this beach. And once again, let's remind everyone that the vacation that they're on costs $60,000 $60, a day. Um, the guests get back aboard finally via car. Well, Dylan, isn't that wonderful? <laughs> yeah. Um, you have an issue getting from the beach to your chartered yacht. Right. And you can get back to the yacht in a car. Right. <laughs> $60,000 a day. Mr. Cynical over here. You can't get a goddamn boat to work for some reason. Uh, well, you bring up a good point. Traversing water is too tough a pot for, for these people. <laughs> Nick, you bring up a good point. The weather looked good. Why is this boat still on the dock? Like, right. if they can sit there in, in the beach and a tender can be driving around, get that boat out onto the ocean. Right. What the fuck's going on here? It's absolutely $60,000 a day. So the guests do eventually get back uh, aboard and scout heads the fuck out of Dodge. As Nick mentioned, so close, but so far. <laughs> so far. So um, Hannah says strong 
Second Chief Stew. We've got a Freudian slip there. Do we want to cover it? We got a lot to get into. Oh, a lot. All right. Uh, moving on. So, ass face, fuck face Leon and his quote unquote friends order some snacks uh, over stories about him fucking in his Ferrari with the top down while he was driving. So, a couple things. One, that's impossible. Uh, you're a liar. Hmm. Two, please try that again. Please try that again, because the chances of you being killed are extremely high, and the world, trust me, needs that. All that being said, that's pretty fucking tight, oh, don't, right, you, fellas? don't you do that. <laughs> don't you do Isn't that. It, well, let me ask you something. Did you have a little bit of uh, excitement and happiness when all Leon wanted was uh, some snacks and that poor excuse for a goddamn cheese grocery store cheese plate showed yeah. up in front of him? Yeah. Were you like, eat that? Yeah. Suck that cheese. No, 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 because his life is too good and he is not cognizant of how empty and black a human being he is. He feels no pain. And he should be doled out plenty because he is a fucking monster of a human being. Fuck this. I hope he's back next season. We get to hear more dope stories. I, I would love to talk to him so badly. It would be the quickest interview we'd ever we ever done with, with any charter guest, mm. any cast member. I would just levy insults at him until he hung up. And guys, I would ask you to give me that because I think it would be a phenomenal episode. Getting his I DMs have no problem with that. I <laughs> actually am for it even. Um, hey, uh, one note uh, with this. Uh, a Barnacle had said in the Facebook group, by the way, get over there, uh, another po- another Below Deck podcast Facebook group. A lot yeah, of fun stuff happening tons there. Tons of fun stuff. A Barnacle theorized that Justin and Scout are best friends and that Justin doesn't really have any friends. These are just a bunch of users. Because you really can't make any sense of this little combination of individuals. It's a it's a strange, you know, hodgepodge of people. But I think Justin's a good guy. I, th- I think uh, that he's got some friends. I, I'm not saying that he's not a great guy. I'm saying I think he's being used. Got it. All right. Well, totally. He's like uh, ju- uh, Leon is like worm to uh, Matt Damon in Rounders. He's just hmm. his child uh, childhood ne'er do well friend who. Who he Justin just doesn't have the heart to uh, ditch and improve his life. Is that uh, that the guy that John Malkovich played? No. All right. So the snacks do get hijacked, and Hannah's not dealing with the stress well. Wonder why. <laughs> She's telling Jess to get the serviettes now. Hannah, can we not speak bourgeoisie at a mile a minute if we're trying to lead people? Say napkins. Um, Leon finally does get his uh, cheese and meats and uh, he goes, what is this pepperoni? There's nothing else to say. Uh, should we talk about Pete being the captain of his son, father and vessel? Uh, well, once again, another barnacle brought up last night when they were watching and giving all the spoilers out as I'm trying to look at my Facebook, watching the goddamn show. Thanks a lot. Yeah. He said, did you say you look at your Facebook while you're watching the show? Yeah. But how, how can you do that? Cause you have to record it professionally and re- you have to recap it professionally. I always do a good job. <laughs> but anyway, they said, uh, why are they still showing this guy? Bravo promised us they yeah. were going to edit him out. Right. He seems like he's here more than he's ever been. Yeah, well, it's all almost like those empty promises to uh, edit people out are worthless and people don't really give a fuck. And I, I was really convinced that had they done what they said they were going to do, fire him and edit him out of Bravo episodes, that we would solve racism. Yeah. I, I thought that, too. I was very, very helpful for that being a, a pretty but I, I don't want to be racial, but I thought that that would be an important domino to knock over. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but alas, we do get more P. And listen, he's a scumbag, but I'm so happy that we do have him because we get some all time Pete moments tonight that we will get to. But should we get to the menu first? Oh, yes. Do you have thoughts? You seem to be champing at the bit. Well, I mean, fucking uh, uh, Kiko's in this kitchen slaving away because uh, he's realized now he's going to be making 72 plates. He had some difficulty with that math. Uh, you know, uh, six times 12. That's OK. He's a nice guy. Anyway, as he's preparing this meal, Captain Sandy's in the galley once again. And she says this to him. How you doing? Focus? Yes, Captain. 72 plates? I'm nervous. Call me if you need me. Just need to concentrate now, Captain. Okay. For fucking what? Call you for what? 
You nagging, overbearing pests, breathing down my fucking back at every minute. Can you get the fuck out of here? Uh, hey, Sandy, I really need help with the tangerine sorbet that's going to accompany the oyster. Could you could you get down here and help me? <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. My, my wife theorized that she, just the cameras are never up at the top of the boat. Can I tell you something? We got plenty of Sandy tonight. I feel like you're in fourth already. Oh, dude, just get into How many second. gears are there? Uh, there's five. Five on a clutch, you're in four. There's fourth. ten tonight. Okay. <laughs> wow, um, another shout car. out to a barnacle, and we really got to start naming these people. But, we have uh, to. Some, someone showed there's just these memes popping up of Sandy springing up in uh, random places, just kind of checking in, you know? Yeah. She'll be at, like, uh, the Roman Coliseum, you know? And just right. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, like, it'd be a funny meme if, uh, you know how Alyssa Milano was at the Kavanaugh hearing? Mm -hmm. If Sandy was just right next to her. <laughs> All right. Is she, is she asking the lawyers if they need anything? <laughs> she also Let me know checked if you need in at, at CHOP. Yeah. Oh, do we need to plan anything here? <laughs> uh, okay, so let's talk about the menu. It is an international menu, quote unquote. So from France, we have oysters. Now, did you guys bucket this? No. Nick, I'm sure you did. Yeah, it's, it's oysters. Hmm. No? <laughs> I'm going to move on. From Brazil, we have for the 14th time in six episodes, <laughs> Mukeka has to stop. Just has to. Has to stop. It's his avocado toast. Um, from Spain, we'll have shrimp. From Japan, we'll have, get this, roast salmon and broccoli florets. Okay. From Italy, we'll have truffle risotto. The dreaded ingredient rears its ugly head. Once again, we'll get there. And from sixth plate, bacon, ice cream, and apple comfy. Now, how do we feel about telling uh, Hannah telling Kiko that he should go up to the captain and tell Sandy that he doesn't have enough food and we're not doing it? Well, uh, <laughs> can you imagine? Can you imagine <laughs> the sage advice from this drug addict? And then he says, I'm not going to do that because <laughs> I need to pull this off for the guests. <laughs> and then she responds, well, if you fail, it's on you. What a fucking what a I, you know, I've said that Sandy is the worst leader in people kind. Hannah is bringing a very, very close. Second. You, when she said that to him. Yeah. I was thinking this young lady needs some sleep and it got me to really thinking <laughs> one time my fucking tooth was killing me. I had an exposed nerve. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, Hey, what can I do dentist? And they said, well, for a hundred bucks, you can pull it. I said, fine, pull the fucking tooth, handed me a package with 10 Vicodin in it for the pain for the next three days. I basically take every single Vicodin. I'm flying high. I don't feel any pain. Now, I want to just but say, then, you brought this up last week. You've told the story many, many times. Oh, hold I'm on. starting to get concerned about it. Well, you. I know. It was a great story. And <laughs> at day four, I start feeling pain. I start getting irritable. And then to bring this back to Hannah, maybe she has a bad tooth. <laughs> oh, he, Nick, he is so happy with himself right now. Smiling from ear to ear. It's a horseshoe bend on the him. bottom of his face. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, Hannah takes a little vacation during the middle of a crisis. Kind of reminds me of our uh, do nothing Congress, huh, guys? Yeah. <laughs> no politics, dude. All right. So, Pat, uh, I need a little bit of a meanwhile here, man. Nothing really happens. Meanwhile. There's a giant motorcycle. <laughs> Bugs gives <laughs> Jess table setting class. Turns out her family is also in the biz. I'm referring to Bugsy. Uh, also, Jess and Rob. Come Their on. romance heats up. Uh, shall we get to dinner? I'd love to. Would you? Yeah. Nick, can we get to dinner? Uh, yeah, I got to get to this moqueca for the 50th. Now, dinner. let me say this, though. Yeah. As the plates start rolling out, Sandy has officially moved into her new timeshare. Uh, she then, if you caught it, watches them eat from the lounge area. For pretty much the entire meal. I'll, I'll make mention of this. You hang on. Mm -hmm. And this isn't, you know, this is a major event of this episode. You know, this is the bulk. Uh, this is the balls of this beast. 
So there's a lot of stuff that goes, you know, you know, this is a full cinematic experience. It's not just dish after dish after dish after dish. So unlike many of my critiques of meals, I'm going to welcome you guys to jump in every Mm. every so often because there there are, uh, you know, waves to this. So oysters are out first. I will say few things. I think we all can agree beat a mignonette but the tangerine sorbet did look inventive i just hope it was not overpowering and the duck fucker leon liked it so it most likely was (laughs) brief interruption like you said sandy is standing over the entire thing for boating and adding needless pressure sandy you have nothing to do with this you cannot help in any way, shape, or form. Quit folding your arms like Batman and go play Candy Crush. <laughs> Makeka is up next. Malia. Batman knows when to disappear. <laughs> yes, he does. Yes, he does. And he also knows when he's needed. Um, Makeka is up next. Like I said, Ma- Malia says that she's got an eye for fine food and that Kiko's doing all right. All right, Malia. I mean, we've got a pretty robust peanut gallery here tonight, but a couple things. Um, one, it's been rumored that her boyfriend's going to be uh, coming on onto mm-hmm. the show. I don't know how that's possible because Kiko's doing great. But two, Malia, you've just painted a huge target on your boyfriend's back. Mm. You're, you know fine food. All right, let's see how fine his food really is. I'm looking forward to him setting foot on Beef Wellington. Uh, all right, so everyone in the gallery, uh, yeah. You ju- you just questioned how uh, another chef might show up on this. Uh huh. Um, allow me to don the TF cap. Okay. Uh, stay. Uh, we we didn't been say explicit. TFC. You just you went with TF cap. I like TFC. Run TFC. Okay. Uh, th- th- uh we. Uh, shit, <laughs> shit. Shit. I mean, I just nope. had to. I had to. I know. I know. I I, I blame me. Um. Oh. Conspiracy theory. Yeah. Uh, We've been pretty explicit, I think, with our prediction of which crew member gets uh, let go for some type of narcotics. Right. Uh, uh, I don't think it's got to be said who it is. Yep. But maybe it's a twofer, and Kiko, and this is how he keeps his cheery disposition, is also on drugs. Wow. You're saying he's railing lines off of Hannah's bare breasts? Yeah, yeah. Like when Hannah uh, was was like being like, "You fuck up, it's on you." What they didn't see is five minutes before they were in the pantry, just like talking about widespread, sniffing and sniffing and sniffing. I got it. Talking I... about all their business plans they're going to have. It's called poke lies. <laughs> I made a career out of it in my twenties. <laughs> Never. That stuff's never going to happen. I had a Coke lie one time. I said um, I wanted to come up. I still think this is a beautiful business, it, however niche it is. I wanted to come up with, because uh, you know vinyl's in. Oh, yeah. I wanted to come up with a company. And don't steal this, because I already have the LLC filed. <laughs> Coke lie. Well, then how could we steal it? <laughs> I want to come up with a business where you can put a playlist on a vinyl. Because right now, it's mm. just it's just records. You have to listen to the whole thing. But... You know, cherry pick songs. Press it. I think yeah, it could be I, a great e commerce business. No brick and mortar needed, sir. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that an awesome idea? It's not as awesome as my business that uh my takeout business, Are You Cereal, but it's pretty good. Your takeout business, Are Your Are You Cereal, is porous. It has so many flaws in its logic. If I was a shark in that tank, I'd say Quite literally, I know we're not supposed to curse because it's prime time. Mm. Get the fuck out of here, Nick. <laughs> I. Hmm. When did you guys talk about this? Are you cereal? It's his drive-through cereal store where you're supposed to eat a bowl of cereal submerged in milk whilst driving. We've seen it's always sunny in Philadelphia. We know how that goes. Oh, there's also a straw so you can drink up all the milk. Terrible idea. I said I'm we're also- still in R and D, dude. Yeah, I'm still. I remember it now, actually, Pat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, keep keep pushing your dreams. Oh, are, are you saying unless it was... this is something you thought of on Coke that we just spoke about? <laughs> are you saying it was forgettable, Nick? Uh, no, not at all, not at all. <laughs> are you cereal? Uh, are I, you I, serious? My had to be jogged. But what was your idea again? Uh, don't want to get oh. into it. Yeah, vinyl. Mm-hmm. We gotta release some sort of greatest hits. A another podcast network on vinyl. <laughs> That's fucking God. The ideas are flowing tonight. Are okay. you on Coke? Are you on Coke? <laughs> I am not, actually. I'm just, you know, glad I'm not dead. Okay, so um, everyone in the galley begins commenting on the fact that Malia can work a chef. Hmm. 
Sandy jumps in on the fun. Can you imagine if this was Ben or the second spy, Anastasia, who demanded silence while they were cooking steak and green beans for five? Can you imagine? This man is trying to make 72 plates of food. Leave him the fuck alone and shut the fuck up. That's a great, great point. Any any one of these other chefs would have fucking snapped. Snapped. Uh, the only thing that keeps him calm, I believe, is some sort of narcotic. Hmm. Uh, uh, getting Anastasia really grinds my gears because she was literally making jello molds and people were and I'm not talking about um, Maya or ever the the one that made nachos with canned corn. <laughs> we forget Mila. that it, Mila Anastasia was not a chef. She just wasn't. This is a great opportunity. Are we shitting on uh, Sandy? Jello molds. Uh, later, Sandy. Uh, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Uh, says something about a Michelin star to Kiko. Don't. I won't. But I will say. Let me remind everyone. And Dylan's already talking about it. So is Nick. This is the captain that allowed guests that are being paying sixty thousand dollars a day be served food from a girl who was folding laundry the yeah, day before. Right. And also a chick who, once again, served nachos with canned corn yeah. who gave a fake resume that Sandy never bothered to fucking check. She was resting fillets in the microwave. She was nuking undercooked fillets, and it's $60,000 a day. Sandy, Anastasia, is not, she thought that she had stumbled upon her, her Mark Wahlberg and Invincible, but that's just that's a movie that doesn't happen in real life no one of uh i thought you guys were gonna give me shit because it is a true story but uh, go ahead nick oh great point uh i think one of captain sandy's greatest shortcomings as a leader slash employer is never having heard of an in-person interview yeah (laughs) it's a such a huge hurdle if you don't know that that's a thing and you're hiring people constantly I don't want to get into it. So it's it's like she's picking a resume at random, like a magician's holding out a deck of cards. You <laughs> bitch. Okay, so shrimp with peppers from Spain is up next. The only real problem I had with dinner was the fourth course from get this Japan, the teriyaki, which had a mass-produced sheen to it, is discharged haphazardly on the plate. If you were to do a collar or something, maybe I could buy the Japan thing. But this looks like a housewife cooked this before she read Mastering the Art of French Cooking. This is not an offering from Japan. There are steamed fucking broccoli florets on the plate, Kiko. Next course, white truffle risotto. Now, I lied when I said the only dish I had an issue with was the salmon. Hmm. I don't, you know, we we did this. I, I had quite the diatribe last week on uh, on truffle. truffle oil, but um, you know, w- w- the guests are told that this is a white truffle risotto. Now I didn't see any truffle on board. They ordered enough oysters for four people. I don't think we're going all out for grams of white truffle, right, guys? Hmm. Um, I have something about this dish. It looked uh, it looked delicious, but you know this dummy over here. I mean, I don't even know what I'm looking at, but it looks scrumptious. Uh, I my mouth was watering as sure. that showed up at the table. Yeah, and you have uh, other thoughts on well, that? Well, a dog salivates at kibble, doesn't he? Even though. He's centuries removed from his ancestral diet of raw, clean meat, and what's in front of him, what looks appetizing to him, is nothing but compressed, frozen fowl and grain. Mm. That's you. I'm a wolf? Uh, All right, so, like I said, there was no white truffle anywhere in sight, which, of course, means the cursed oil is back. Now, fear not. Ass-faced, dog-faced Leon and co. will think it's quote-unquote fire. If these people (laughs) were armed with any knowledge, they would know that white truffle cannot be heated, period. Mm. It will destroy the flavor of the truffle. If it was not shaved on top, the fifth plate is nothing but a fucking lie. Now know that when you move forward in life. If somebody says this is white truffle something, where is it? Because it's supposed to be naked and on top of my dish. Did you say that this was $70? It's $70? Where's the fungus? 
too caught up on this. Yeah. Where does he learn this stuff? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I, I can't wait to hear what he has to say about dessert and uh, dessert including bacon. Uh, uh, hang on. Very divisive. All right, hang on. So uh, let's get to the American dish, bacon ice cream, uh, which Sandy says is Michelin star quality. No, Sandy, it's not. <laughs> the oyster was the closest thing to that celestial scale, you idiot. Not this sweet treat. Now, once again, the plating is suspect. The sauce, whatever it is, it looked like a, I don't know, like a vial of uterine lining spilled onto the plate. Um, they, they didn't have time to clean it up. And I'm sorry to end on such a graphic note, but there is a silver lining. Kiko is the man. He oh. did as well as he could have. I give it 88 pots. Wonderful. Wonderful job, He Dylan. did a great job. Here's my question. He did such a good job. I'm so proud of him. Level of difficulty, 1 to 10, for a guy realizing midway through the day as he's prepping. Uh-huh. Uh, that he's got four other t- people to cook for. T- uh, six uh, other people. Uh, six, was it six? No, it was four. Uh, sorry. It was four. Um, so 10 being diff- difficulty with one person pulling this off. Mm, I think. Could a sous chef in some of the greatest restaurants in some of the biggest cities pull oh, well, this off? Of course, of course. It would oh, okay. be nothing to them. But let's remember that these are failed chefs. They're yacht chefs. And mm. I think, oh, Gotta keep that in mind. For him, I would say that this is probably an eight or a nine. I mean, there's a lot of moving parts. He's got truffle. He's got fillets. Or it, it's, it's tough. It, it was a hard, hard night out for him, and he did pretty well. He, he uh, pulled it off, and he should be commended, but... Mind you, if he, he had to do this two nights in a row, it would be the exact same meal. I mm. think hence why he had this very simplistic world tour type thing. Because right. yeah. he only knows these things. That's why we have seen Mokeka for the first time. And Adam was someplace saying, damn, he serves that a lot. Right, right, mm. right. Uh, so uh, Pete is polishing up silver after dinner. And uh, Malia tells him to go down. He does not automatically. And Malia gets rather perturbed. Now, Malia, he doesn't have to drop the forks and race to his bunk the second you tell him to go down. He's an adult. If he's up two, three hours after you tell him to go down, then maybe you have a problem. But don't destroy this tactic's efficacy, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, there's There's a change that needs to be made. Let's not cannibalize the message. And to our thought leaders listening... That goes for you, too. Hmm. Okay, so the guests are told to get the fuck out of here. Um, (laughs) Justin, to his credit, goes down like a fucking gentleman, and he thanks Kiko personally for a great meal. Next time you're in New York, man, here's my number. (laughs) Come party with me. I'll spend all the money on you, because that's what I do. And what you do is paraphrase. Uh, I, I... I thought that was a direct quote. Um, I I think he nailed the gist. It's a true sign of a a pathetic individual. Yeah. Uh, He's just a lonely, lonely soul who uses his his wealth to attract uh, comrades. Sorry for that text message, audience. Um, Guys, I, you know, Larry David coined this um, season six, I believe. It's the empty gesture. It's the, it's the empty gesture. Um, you know, you say, hey, if you ever need anything, just give me a call. And then they do, and you go, what are you doing? <laughs> I didn't mean that. that. That's that's why anytime someone makes any type of gesture offer like that, no no matter how fleeting or seemingly in the moment, I will I will hit them up on that incessantly <laughs> until they, they admit to lying or <laughs> take me on vacation. Uh, to anybody that encounters Nick in the future, you are now armed with that information. So... <laughs> Move forward however you please. So um, I love this guy. I think that he's probably exploiting a fair amount of tax loopholes. But aside from that, really good guy. Mm -hmm. The fucking Nutria looking Leon uh, would never have done this because he's a disgusting, oversized, invasive species that needs to be hunted mercilessly. So or getting a car crash, getting his dick sucked in a Ferrari, not getting his dick sucked. That's where. You know, these these idiot pathological liars who whose parents have given them a ton of money. That's where you're taking it too far. You know, if you want to say, oh, I got roadhead in my Ferrari with the top down, that's fine. But saying that you fucked someone while you were driving, you're lying. 
You want to impress me? Do anal. Can I, uh, I want to go back to. I loved your point about uh, him being hunted. Yeah. Um, we've talked many times how we'd all appreciate the most dangerous game, which I believe is a perfect segue into uh, today's sponsor, as we talked about, guys. Uh, the Quibi Show, oh, most yeah. dangerous game, yep. starring Chris Evans. Yep. Uh, go sign up, free trial for Quibi. And a lot, uh, yeah, just, a lot of people are talking shit on Quibi. A lot of people are saying like, oh, they sank like one point seven five billion dollars into it, whatever. Guys, coronavirus came, okay? Jeffrey Katzenberg is a smart guy. He knows what he's doing. They have a great lineup of shows and content on Quibi. Uh, you know your attention span is shrinking. Sign up. I actually shouldn't say this considering the amount of money they're giving us, but actually Jeffrey Katzenberger is a dinosaur and he has no idea where technology is going. Quibi's a sinking ship, but go watch Most Dangerous Game starring Chris Evans. Okay, so uh, Hannah is left to deal with the guests after dinner. They ask for snacks to not wake the chef up, but they want some snacks. And Hannah makes them a deal. She'll get them some snacks and then bedtime. What kind of fucking drugs are you on, young lady? These people are paying $60,000 a day. You do not get to tell them that you've had enough. Can I say this too? Unbelievable. Let's add the extra layer to this. The boat hasn't left the dock. You're, you should be so lucky. They didn't just walk off off a day two. Yeah. With no hope of going out to the water. Right. It's unbelievable. She, I understand that she's unhappy. I understand that she's been doing this a long time, but she fucking pisses me off. I would have, I would have said, uh, go fuck yourself. I, w- I would have said the exact same thing. Exact same thing. And that's honestly, that's a grand off the tip. Every fucking one of these interactions. Oh, great point. Uh, oh, you know, the best thing to do if you want something is put it on your preference sheet. Uh, I'll get you some snacks, but go to bed. Hannah, you are in the service industry. Stop being a bitch to your guests. Jesus Christ. She goes down and pops a little pilly before bed. They did get that footage, didn't they? Nick? Very, very telling, I, I will say. She just reminds me of an athlete who who hung on one season too long. And yeah. It's really quite sad at this point, except yeah. in this instance, uh, she's ruining paying guest time. Yeah, she reminds me a lot of Antonio Gates. That's a good one. I was trying to look. I even, like, Googled it. <laughs> she reminds me of someone who has a bad tooth. Okay, so... <laughs> What happened to my throat? Next morning. Next morning. More food. Pete says that he's going to play a different little game with Bugs, a different mm-hmm. one than he played with Lara, or should I say Sid from Ice Age. He's going to be a different kind of daddy to this young lady. He's going to quote unquote throttle it back this time. Clip. <laughs> Seven. Oh, it's going down tonight. Don't you have work today? I've been working since 6 o'clock this morning. Bugsy, I'm on my second application at sunscreen this morning. Damn. Damn, Daddy. I picked up immediately that Bugsy's a flirt. And I'm going to play Bugsy a little different than I played Lara. Have you ever had an Italian woman? No, can no? I please? <laughs> Pete's not just going to fall in love overnight. Pete is like another specimen. Why is Pete still in the galley? Bugsy? What the hell? What? You're like undressing me with your eyes. <laughs> I'm undressing you with my eyes. That's how I feel. Are you naked? Oh my gosh. I feel like violated. Look at him. You gotta let the laws of energy take control. I'm intrigued by you. For some reason, he feels like he's got this entitlement to say whatever he wants to say. But no, it's not happening. This is something ladies know by, I think, the time they're 25, but dudes have no clue. A lot of dudes are delusional. Oh, my God, yeah. He is completely immersed in the belief that she's into him. But any rational human being with any understanding of picking up on someone's uh, social cues would say, she hates you. Yep. Have a, like... Be a little more self-deprecating. Start there. Just just have a little less self-confidence. 
he's gonna watch this back and he's gonna be like, see, she called me a specimen. I know, it's unbelievable. We talked about it on a, uh, covering Love is Blind, but you know, life usually, rather tragically and harshly, mm. will set the bar for you at some point. You mm. cannot walk through life like this. Pete will settle down eventually with a slightly overweight ex-felon mm -hmm. from uh, the greater Massachusetts area. And we'll often talk about his sexual ex exploits of the past uh, and perhaps cry when conceiving his second child. Right. But in the meantime, hey, unit, uh, if you're looking for a little help on how to behave and get laid and get laid for less money. Here we go. Check out my book, Cracking the Code, How to Get Laid for Less Money. Uh, it's just a quick read. Uh, and it will give you all the tools you need. But it's not a quick read. It's 60 to, well, how many were, uh, 120,000 words? No, it's 250 pages. That's a, that's a good chunk of words. It's not the quickest read. And again, it's very specific, Pete. If you are trying to get laid, but for cheap, hmm. pick this book up. So speaking and, of- And I can't stress this enough to the people listening or watching. This is a real thing. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, so speaking of cheap, let's get to the tip. Before we get to the tip meeting, I want to say, when he hands over the envelope, he kind of builds in the never left the dock caveat. Mm -hmm. He's like, we never left the dock. Here's the envelope. So right there, I was like, uh-oh. Let's get to the tip meeting. Tip meeting? Oh, you want to do the breakdown? Yeah. All right, first off, Sandy prefaces about what's about to unpack in that envelope by saying it doesn't matter what the guests that just left think. It only matters what I think of you. And I think you all did a wonderful job. Wrong. Shut up. The only thing that speaks is bread. You bitch. <laughs> Couldn't said it better. $17,000. Yeah. Now that's uh 1,277 each. They all scoff. I truly only feel the only person that had any right to have any issue with this is Kiko. Uh, because I would turn to the deck crew and say, how many toys did you have to blow up over the last three days? Right. What did you do the last three days aside from help out at dinner service? Because there was nothing. Pete just applied sunscreen and sexually harassed bugs. That's all he did. You deserve nothing. <laughs> you deserve in moment nothing. In fact, they should be making a phone call to whoever booked this goddamn trip and say, I want half my money back. Yeah. And if you make us look like cheap fucks on this stupid TV show, Below Deck will sue your fucking ass. Yeah. Um, it's, it's funny you say that because they did feel like they were wronged on how they were viewed. He put out, I, I oh. cannot remember where I saw this on social media, but that his $17,000 tip was actually 23% of, uh, I believe he said his prorated thing or something. I don't know mm, if he got Yeah, it, listen. Or, let's get him on the phone. Even if it's not 23%. Let's say it's 18. He's well within his rights to tip 18. They didn't leave the fucking dock. The dream vacation of being on a yacht for all your Instagram photos, which is the reason all these retards are doing this, because yeah. they vacation to Vegas Hard 20 R. times a year. Hard R. Is to get all those shots and visit all these different like little uh, coves and stuff. You basically were at a, a floating restaurant for three days. Yep. How dare you? Not spacious enough. And it's spacious, but not spacious enough for this. So, um, shall we get to the night out? Yes. All right. So they sit down to dinner at uh, this this restaurant that looked uh, to have, it sounded to have strange menu offerings. They mm. had some stuff from the world of Asia. Mm. Uh, it seemed like an international menu. Nick, do you have anything to say about this here restaurant? I have quite a bit to say about it because uh, since I am recording, I have the luxury of uh, TripAdvisor right in front of me. And since we're recording, I have the luxury of going. Yes, Veradero in Majorca. Yeah. It's, it's very beautiful on the water, some beautiful settings. But man, this place sounds like a real fucking shithole. How many dots uh, does it have? Uh, Good here, here's some numbers to kind of give you a, a little a gauge of where this place is. Yeah. You got 376 reviews okay. with a 3.0 dot rating. Oh, uh, no. Uh, horrific. 147 of 177 uh, bar in Mallorca, bottom of the barrel. Wow. And like for something that kind of portends to be high end, 
uh, 1,457 out of 1,942 restaurants. It is just wow, horrible. I'm, I'm just going to read some titles of a couple before I get into my very short review okay. of, mm-hmm. of uh, Veradero. Okay. Terrible service, overpriced food, so disappointing, rude waitress slash service, uh, shame, super stunning view, poor service slash bad manners. All caps. Avoid at all costs. Oh yeah, that's that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and it goes on and on and on. But I will say, uh, the one I am gonna read is all caps. Avoid at all costs. Hmm. Written by S. J. Witters. Twenty reviews. Uh, six six uh, likes on his or no twenty contributions. Excuse me. Got uh, it. And six likes on those. Got it. So he's not like into it too hard. He says such a shame. Perfect setting. But the worst, all caps again, service staff ever. Please do not part with your cash. If I could get, if I could have given a zero, I would have. Uh, no of course. Way. You know, all it takes is one bad server to take down a restaurant on Yelp or TripAdvisor. Honestly, that's why you got to kind of read these reviews and understand who that bad apple is. Nick, what does Veradero mean? Is it some it type? It means, it's also referred to as Playa Azul, Blue Beach. Got uh, it. Nope, that's that's a place in Cuba. Okay. Oh. And we can we can move on. It's not really that important. Oh, I think it might be named after that Cuban city. Got it. Okay. That's the weird vibe you're getting. So um we have got Pete not being jealous, but just missing Laura. Um which I'm very confused about because she looks like Sid from Ice Age. I, I don't know why he's so smitten. I, he does look like a lobster, though, so I guess it makes sense. I have a theory on this. It's kind of a semi-hot take. Okay, this is in. This is mildly uh, heated up. How by cowardly the sun. of you! How cowardly! Of I just want to pr- present at you it. Hedging your bets. Uh, yes, exactly. This is what we've told you to do, Dylan. This is why we nail it. Thank it's you. Come in sizzling hot now. Low expectations. Lara is good. staying in contact with this moron. Yeah. Because she wants to do a little intel about how the show's going. Got it, got it. He's her little lifeline to information. She thinks he's a scumbag. Uh, Even when you hear her, they talk on the phone. She's like, you can tell she hates him. Right. And manipulating him. Yeah. Anyway. No, I think that that's uh, mildly warm. 85 degrees. That's what the sun would do if you put it on a plate in the yard. It'd be 85 degrees. Yeah. I did not say it would be any hotter than that. No, you were 100% right. So on um, the main course, see what I did there? Nice and good. Nice. Mm-hmm. Is Hannah versus, for some reason, <laughs> Rob and Jess. You and your girlfriend just have like an open relationship? It's not my girlfriend. Oh. Yeah. You're just dating someone. There's nothing going on. I would not do this if there were. So bad. I broke it off for myself. I'd rather not be in something if I'm gonna cheat on someone, even though it's like that open experience. Mm. What puzzle are you trying to put together? <laughs> I'm starving. People come into your life for a, a reason, a season, or a lifetime. Everything in my life has been pretty temporary. You hear that, everybody? That's the red flag some of us uh, never want to see. Mm-hmm. See it? It's just waving there for everybody else but you. Okay, let me, can I do the breakdown on this? Not because before I say this. I think we have the same thought. Do you mind if I take it? I would love, I would love you to. Okay. <laughs> Nick, why don't you take it? That sounded like jingle bells. It sounded like a chain. It didn't sound like a flag <laughs> at all. It sounded like antithetical to a piece of cloth blowing in the wind. It sounded like a chain. It's the red flag going up, being pulled by a chain. Okay? And, Nick, I, I, don't, need to, I don't need to hear any of you your see, critiques. You said, do they see it? Regardless! It's a chain. It's a red flag is what it is. Boy, Jess, you got quite a picker there. A former drug addict that's into open relationships. Wow! But he has a kind heart. We all do. Mm-hmm. More well, not 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 true, but more than that, I'll say not too reassuring whatsoever. What was the people coming to your life for a season, a reason, a it, lifetime? It's the Everything's sp- temporary. It's for me? the spin that good-looking guys get to do, right? 
uh, that an ugly guy could never get away with. Right. She's looking with her eyes and her brain is not taking in exactly the dumb yeah. spin that he's doing. Yeah. J- Jess, you're, I would say you're too good for this, but you speak of uh, every relationship being pretty much what is about to happen yeah. with this one. So uh, you get what you deserve. The, Why am I even trying to protect her? Yeah, I, well, we love Jess. We're a fan of Jess on this podcast. Uh, and I, after hearing this again right in the moment, a reason, a season, or a lifetime, uh, or a season or a reason, a lifetime. Some, Either way, I looked it up to liver. see if this was, in fact, the title of Below Decks episode. Yeah. Uh, it was not. And now I'm going to don the TFC again. Mm. Yeah. The title of this episode is uh, Ass Oh face. Snap. Oh, 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 got it. <laughs> Who says that all the time? Thank you very much. I believe they stole that from Pat. That's right. <laughs> you know what? That Hold would have on. been a perfect time to say it. Nick, they've stealing. They've, they've stealing my life. Well, next thing I know, an episode is going to be called They Stealing My Stuff. You sound like Donna Brazil. Uh, Donna, how did Hillary get the question? Man, they stole it from my emails. A thief in the night. No, I know they were stolen, but. Okay. <laughs> All, right. All right. So she said that. Uh, I think it was Hillary. How did they get the questions? <laughs> Whatever. Um, and to cap it, can I can I propose that is the episode title of our episode? Pat sounds like Donna Brazil. Okay, that's better. <laughs> but let's get to a more important subject. It's about how bad a candidate Trump is. Okay, so um, <laughs> Hannah, uh, they get to the club. Hannah pulls Bugs aside and asks through nervous, drug-addled laughter, oh, uh, weren't you worried about coming back to such a lousy chief stew, which was a dig for those in the know. Um, well, I mean, they played the clip thousands of times mm-hmm. so i guess it's not for those in the know but that was the uh major mic drop uh of their last relationship so i just want to ask uh hannah what the fuck is your problem mm-hmm. she is horrible tonight she is she, horrible now but dylan i have to say whenever you're going at each other's throat or you had that in the past i didn't hate this move that she did you're out drinking you're breaking bread like just squash any future beef it's by it's not squashing beef it's being passive aggressive and dare i say mm. sorry guys a little cunty okay a little cunty mm. yeah she wasn't trying to squash beef she was she was she grinding was a, up the meat and, yeah. and rolling it into beef patties she was yes. creating beef yes do you have any thoughts about that any rebuttals no Mm-mm. all right mm. um so anyways they uh have a fantastic night out and they get back to the boats uh once again kiko is an all-star says you guys go for it uh take the take the bunk for the night sleeps in his bed though for some strange reason Hmm. maybe rob's playing hard to get shut her down this made me uh love kiko even more because it reminded me of one of my best chapters in cracking the code how to close uh more ass for less money two plugs uh usually have to pay us if you're gonna hit two plugs well the talk about it so many times pay quibby money well okay so the various uh rules of uh being a great wingman are always take one for the team uh Be the backup story. Basically lie if you have to. Be a facilitator, which I think that's exactly what Kiko is doing here. And finally, never step on a team man's dick. Teammate's dick. Forgive me. Got Mm -hmm. it. Got it. So whatever bullshit he's just laying out there. Oh, yeah. He's a lawyer. Mm -hmm. He's a great lawyer. (laughs) Uh, Family. Family practice. Yes. He's a lot of hard stuff. Knows exactly what he wants in a marriage. All right. So... This this reminds uh, me again of one of my greatest laments was ever comparing Kiko to that creep Adrian. Yeah. Because like I said last week, Adrian would have said you can have the bunk, but then he would have snuck in there undetected, again. hid under the covers yep. so he could listen to those two have sex. <laughs> you like my meat? <laughs> what the fuck was that? You like my meat? <laughs> is, there, is there a child ghost in here? It's, it's nice. <laughs> okay. All right. Adrian sounds like something Haley Joel Osment would have been scared of as a child. All right. It, it reminds me of this Are You Afraid of the Dark episode, actually, with this kid who was outside. He was a ghost, and he needed a jacket. And yeah. just every night he showed up, and he'd go, I'm cold. <laughs> <laughs> and for the makers of that show, too scary. <laughs> Way too scary. All right. So 
Um, jacuzzi with the gang. Do we want to talk about it? Not the gang. It's just Alex and Mark. I think Malia was going to get in there, but then she said, Alex and cold. Mark. I'm sorry. Alex and I'm sorry. What Alex and Bugs. What kind of naughty videos have you been watching, Patrick? <laughs> Well, you know I love cuckolding. Uh, no, it's uh, I'm sorry. It's Alex, the Bostonian with a small dick and a uh, Bugsy. And Bugsy. What is she doing in there other than she's blackout drunk? No, I don't know. She's having a good time. Um, is Alex and Mark a noted porn series? Do you guys know that? Yeah, you didn't know that? Now I don't know what to believe. Okay, so um, listen. As you could tell, the episode kind of ends with a whimper a little bit. We've kind of been dragging our ass for the past couple of minutes, but... We are professionals, so we are going to... <laughs> what? Oh, I was going to say that with editing, because it was slowing down, I think they had a nothing burger, how to wrap this up. You know, that's where it was a weird edit where we've known Rob for what? We're on episode five or six oh, now? That, yes. What, why is it now that we are learning that he is 10 years sober? By the way, I, I believe I've seen him drinking. Al alcohol does I not... I want to get into that. I want to okay. get into that. Uh, his, uh, I guess his mom was also a drug addict. Well, he knew that his mom was a drunk and she died of cirrhosis of the liver, which Nick said was the most painful way to see a family member off into mm -hmm. the tranquil and halls. But he wasn't there for her, apparently. And he feels a lot of guilt for that. Well, I, I don't know. I think that he... No, he said he couldn't save her. I think he yeah. was like in the picture. I think he felt like... He just couldn't do anything to stop the, this this impending doom. Yeah. I, Hence I, why it is the most painful way to see a loved one Exactly. Go. Now, I don't want to be cynical about somebody's pain, but Rob strikes me as the kind of guy that thinks that he, he thinks he's in a movie or something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, he knows he's on a show. He's playing the camera is what you're saying? He's playing the camera. He does this thing where he's like, hey, Malia, I just want to have respect for you. He's doing this thing where, like, I couldn't save my mother. L listen, that's tragic. I, everybody deals with, with pain in their own way. But if she was a filthy fucking drunk that you put in rehab numerous times and she <laughs> died, I mean, what are you doing? She, Quit beating yourself up. You're she, not in a fucking movie. No, you don't know anything. To give more credence to that theory that this man thinks he's in a movie, he's also built this narrative for himself that he became some some rebel uh, drug transporter mm -hmm. uh, right. to save his mother. Yeah. Uh, oh, all too convenient. No, you're a drug addict and a criminal as well. Yeah. Quit painting this rosy picture of yourself. Yeah, South African made. They, these kind of like weird confessions on reality TV shows is obviously nothing new, but it, it is never... Uh, it, it's always pathetic. Uh, may I share? There used to be a show called Celebrity Rehab, but then they did a spinoff, Celebrity Sex Rehab. Oh, with the snake oil salesman, Dr. Drew. You got it, Dr. Yeah. Drew. And he had the drummer from Skid Row on there, and they got him in an interview. Uh, his mother was calling him, and he's such a sex addict, he admitted that he was masturbating, and she was dying on the other end of that phone, and had he put down his penis <laughs> and picked shit. up the ringer, he could have saved her life, but it was masturbation that killed her. Wow. To admit that on TV. Mm -hmm. He realizes that footage lives on forever. And also, check out uh, PMZs on Patreon.com, where we do cover the insanity that takes over a man's mind that signs the release form that says, you can use my likeness on HBO's Cat House. Yes, I did drive 40 miles into the bowels of the desert to fuck horrors, and I want to be shown on television. I'm getting distracted. <laughs> Quick personal uh, Skid Row story of my own. Yeah. The band? Yeah. Oh. Uh, it's very loosely tied to them. But uh, so uh, there's Summerfest <laughs> Music Festival in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. <laughs> Familiar? Familiar? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, of course not. Oh. It's been around a while. I will see. It's kind of OG in the festival game. You but, keep going. Uh, I'm going to look up who headlined last year. Uh, what was the festival called again? Summerfest. Okay. Put Summerfest Wisconsin because I'm sure that is not a unique name. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, so uh, they were giving away free tickets at uh, the grocery store, just like just like the general admission, like really cheap ones, like they're mm. thirty bucks or something to get in. Mm. And uh, but you just had to go up to the radio DJ at the grocery store with his booth, tell him who your favorite or who you were most excited to see there. And my buddy Jordan Hansen shout out uh he said say you want to see skid row and uh i didn't know who they were and i went up and i was like oh man just stoked for skid row and the guy that was the guy's favorite and we got extra tickets 
and uh, it was just it was a, it was a blast. Nick, and I, I hope you have a gr- so I hope you have a great back. time here, Nick. These tickets have been sitting here in front of me for hours, just collecting <laughs> dust. <laughs> Enjoy the show. I bet that guy's never heard of Six Skid Row. I, I love morning radio. You got the answer right. We've got tickets, two tickets to Skid Row on Tuesday night at 11.30 in downtown Los Angeles. Uh, do you have anything else? Oh, for uh, the- Just that <laughs> uh, Skid Row. So I always, uh, the term Skid Row, I always thought of the band until I moved to Los Angeles. And now it is the homeless encampments that are right out my window. Mm, yep. Um, and I do want to go over some of the headliners for... 2019 Great. i would have a blast at this music festival they've got get this chicago i would kill to see chicago mm, oh I've my seen god him a few t- i saw him with great. nick last year uh shaka khan that would be a fucking blast seen her at the bowl the roots oh my gosh that would be so fun um, i was not exaggerating when i say this is og in the festival game since 1968 before or after woodstock after I believe that was sixty one. Uh, no. Okay, so um, sixty seven, sixty six. I, I do want to talk about oh. this um, this distinction between AA and NA. Mm-hmm. So there really is no distinction. No judgment. I'm just confused about the difference. There's there's Alcoholics Anonymous, evidently, and Narcotics Anonymous. Now, this is a reminds me of a famous story where uh, my my father's uh, family friends uh, that. They weren't doing too hot. The mom and the son both went to rehab together because the son had started doing heroin. Now, he went with his mother, and she got up in front of everybody, and they applauded her for being a year sober. And he said, you're not sober. (laughs) And she said, what do you mean? He said, you smoke weed every night. (laughs) The person leading the group had to have a chat with her about lying and her drug use. So, I mean, aren't sober people supposed to just be sober? That's the idea. Right? You shouldn't take a cake uh, every year if you've indulged in some uh, some of those other things. Yeah. It's still mind altering. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. The whole idea is escapism with uh, with this this thing. Yes. All right. From a well, lot what I've heard though of the people that I know who uh, are friends with uh, what Bill, uh, it, it's scarily dogmatic. The AA system. Oh, the big um, book you're referring it's, to. It's it's it's. Almost cultish. Uh, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna catch some flack for that, but uh, yeah, I think that uh, everybody has their own sobriety journey. Ten knots. <laughs> um, all right. Not so even. I think my computer's about to die, so I'm gonna get to this last clip very very quickly, which is the highlight of the night. Speaking of somebody who needs a group very quickly to diagnose some serious fucking problems going on, let's talk about Pete talking to bugs. Hey, bugger. See, Bugsy, now you're gonna get to know who Pete is. Oh my gosh. By the way, they call me Shameless Pete. So, like, I'm not crying or anything, well, like, a little bit, but, like, did you have a thing with the second stew, right? We had a connection from the get. And she feels the same way? Yep, I'm gonna go chase her down and see what happens. I'm gonna undress her with my f-ing teeth. I'm gonna do things that she's never had done to her before, and she's gonna fall in love. Making my hangover worse. Have you had relationships on boats before? Just banging my stewardess, isn't she? Sorry? What's wrong See, with like, that? I don't know I... if you're saying that for shock value. Or no, it's true. Them. Stews that are just down for the good time. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I got my name last year, Party Pete. <laughs> Stop, that laugh is so much. I met some <laughs> cop and stews. Sorry? <laughs> you met some what? Some <laughs> cop and stews. Holy <laughs> <laughs> shit. <laughs> If you just got the transcript of this communication, it would be a bad porn script. It would uh, you be- know how I got the name Party P? <laughs> yeah. You know I like doing? Fucking stews. Yeah. You like what? Oh, you know what I like to do. Right. I- it would also be grounds for a lawsuit, <laughs> I think. Maritime law. I don't know why she's continuing to ask questions. Yeah, I, I, the only thing I would say of Bugs is probably shut this down a little bit sooner, mm-hmm. just because of how fucking disgusting this guy is. Um, I, I mean, it's it's so crazy how awful he is. I think that everyone was kind of open to the fact, like, oh, he's just kind of like dumb a Boston douche. douche. But no, 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 no. no he's no. weird. He's weird. He's weird. And he reminded me a little bit of Parker from uh, Below Deck Yachting. Yeah. 
He's off. Totally. He's got Parker mixed with... Uh, a rapist. Yeah, a little bit of a rapist. Mm-hmm. Nick, do you have any final thoughts? Parker with a real, real evil streak. <laughs> Although we actually said that about him, too. He was... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's Parker. Parker's going to kill Parker. somebody. Parker. I'm Parker. <laughs> I'm Parker. Parker probably has killed somebody by now. Um, all right. So then uh, the episode culminates with Jess not breaking her finger. Mm-hmm. So uh, we will be back next week. Uh, jump in the iTunes ratings and reviews. Leave five stars and let us know what you think. In a word or many. One word. Go with one word. What do you think about the show? Just give us one word. What do you think? Tell your friends. Join us on Patreon at patreon.com slash another podcast network. Join us on Facebook and another podcast network. Uh, that's it for me. I'm Dylan saying goodbye. Thank you to Quibi. Nick, say goodbye. Thanks, Quibi. Bon voyage. Pat. I w- it was great to be here. All righty. Yeah.